everyone. Welcome back to the layout. The Union Pacific Railroad Evanston subdivision. My name is Daryl Cruz, owner and builder of the layout and your host for episode 6 of season 2024. A changing gears here from what I've been doing the last couple of weeks. I have been working on uh, electronics and uh, working on adding a booster getting all the voltage uh, correct and amperage right and we're definitely switching gears here now doing scenery and in this case at the Aspen Tunnels. I was very happy to get back into doing some scenery. Uh, one of the things I love about model railroading is you have so many different types of skills that you use in creating uh, the layout and creating your railroad. Now here's where we stood last week. I did include this as part of last week's update. So I was able to get the uh, tunnels placed where I wanted them and all the abutments in places where I thought it would uh, look good and look uh, as realistic and, and as prototypical as possible. And as you can see, I also made things kind of at an angle instead of the mountain range going at a 90 degree angles to the bench work instead as you can see i kind of put it at an angle going from right to left as the mountain range goes across here now these tunnels are about four feet in length which comes out to about 350 feet the actual tunnels are more like 2500 feet i think they're like a half mile long so this is definitely a condensed version of the Aspen Tunnels. I'm not sure if you would ever want a tunnel that long on a model railroad layout just because you wouldn't see the train for so long. Anyway, uh, here you can see I've started adding some cardboard. I've been using cardboard webbing and rosin paper and plaster on all the scenery to this point. And I put in the vertical pieces here, as you can see, um, also attached pieces of cardboard to the tunnel portals and abutments so that I had something to attach the uh, horizontal pieces of card cardboard to. And it, one thing, if you look closely, you can see I went above the line that I drew on the backdrop. So I'm a good two, three, uh, well, probably about two inches, maybe two, two and a half inches above the line. And I did that because when I start putting the cardboard there, when I put it on the line, it just looked like, okay, this is not going to be high enough above the tracks to, to, be, to look realistic. So I kind of wanted to make the uh, mountains a little bit bigger than what I had originally planned. So uh, it's interesting, once you start getting the actual physical structures in place, you start thinking, okay, does that look good? always constantly evaluating how things look and then now you can see the rest of the cardboard going in you know the horizontal pieces and it's about a I would say four or five inch uh, grid through all this and I used a hot the glue gun to attach these uh, to the fascia and the backdrop and also of course to attach the pieces of cardboard to each other so it's uh, some hot glue at each joint and whenever there's a connection from the end of the cardboard to another piece of cardboard or to the background or fascia now one thing um, I want to make sure I do is add some supports underneath because the plaster is not very thick and so it, if it doesn't have support it will kind of sag a little bit I did not want it to sag once I added the plaster also one thing that's very important I need to put a backdrop back behind here so once the plaster was in I was going to uh, act I was going to have to detach the the cardboard webbing and so forth from the backdrop so everywhere where the cardboard is glued with a hot glue gun 
to the backboard or backdrop. Uh, I was going to have to go, I am going to have to go in and use a, a putty knife or a chisel and uh, scrape behind there and get it to be removed from that so that I can then slide the uh, photo backdrop back behind there. So when I do that, I am going to lose a lot of support, and so I want to make sure that there was uh, support uh, of the plaster webbing and the plaster shell once I detach that. So I, as you can see, I just cut some pieces of plywood and put them in inside. I always uh, try and run a train through to, again to make, okay, how does this look? How are the uh, dimensions? How are the the size of different things? How does it look? Of course, one thing also, want to make sure that nothing hits on the tunnel portals and so forth. Don't want to try and fix that once the plaster is all in and dried. But I was uh, satisfied at that point that everything uh, is looking good. Uh, then I cover the uh, cardboard webbing with some rosin paper. And this is paper that they use to put on, full, on floors, on new constructions. So if they put down a finished floor and they still have a lot of work to do, they put this rosin paper down over it so that it's not damaged while they complete the rest of the construction. And here you can see I just have two pieces put in there. And I just kind of uh, put the pieces in and then kind of put it over the um, the fascia there and then I use a, a, a utility knife you know to cut it exactly along the edge and the same thing along the backdrop I don't know if you noticed on the previous video the rosin paper folded up onto the backdrop so I just use a utility knife to cut that off uh, for the ends, then you, you use a lot of smaller pieces of paper then to cover up the cardboard webbing um, for the areas uh, that have a lot more different uh, contours and so forth on the areas around the tunnel portals. Now, to be honest with you, the ends took longer. Doing the two ends took much longer than putting the first two initial pieces on. The first big pieces didn't take long at all. It takes a little bit more time to put the smaller pieces in so that they fit exactly. And again, you don't need to do it the exact size paper. You usually put a piece of paper on there and glue it, you know, down and attach it. I'm looking at showing this, by the way, because it got darker. <laughs> you can't really tell from this video, but I definitely noticed that the uh, Morgan underneath it got darker once I got things covered up. But anyway, for all this paper, we we'll just put it on there, glue it down on the cardboard webbing, and then use a utility knife to kind of cut along the edges so that it fits properly. All right, then I use a plaster gauze, uh, which I usually get from Amazon, find where I can find the cheapest uh, plaster gauze uh, per square foot and so forth. I don't really have one particular brand. There's lots to choose from. By the way, I definitely would recommend putting a newspaper or something over the lower level, which I didn't do. It left kind of a mess. Plaster is definitely messy. Um, and then here you can see I put the remaining part of the uh, plaster gauze. And you notice the, the plaster has a bunch of cracks between the plaster and the edge of the fascia. Uh, we'll take care of that in just a minute. And, and as you can see, things are getting more and more messy. Yeah, I put this probably a, a double layer. <laughs> the, the bath the track's getting messier. You think I would have learned after the first, as I was going along, but not too bad on the floor. I really don't worry about it too much because it's not too hard to clean up and all of it's going to be painted. 
eventually. Uh, even the floor is going to be repainted eventually. Once I get all the, an area done, then I go back and repaint the floor. Um, now, the next thing I did was um, paint the plaster gauze. I was obsessed with the messiness, but anyway, here it is uh, painted now. I, I, once I get the plaster gauze all in, then I mix some plaster up, 50% plaster, 50% water. And it's a very uh, thin mix of plaster, and I just use a paintbrush and paint that onto the plaster gauze, which definitely smooths it out. One thing you'll notice is that the seam between the plaster and the fascia is all smoothed out. And there's some other different areas where there's maybe a little crack here or there. Uh, definitely able to kind of take care of that with the painting. Uh, it's very, when it's 50 50, it's very thin. But once you take your brush and put the thin plaster onto the existing plaster, the existing plaster just kind of sucks the moisture out of it. And so it kind of instantly turns thick as you paint it on. So it um, starts off thin as you're painting it on, then it thickens up, and you're able to cover up cracks and smooth things out. The one thing I also worked on this week is some uh, backdrops that's going to go back behind here and on the right and to the left of it, and actually along the whole upper level. These are, again, some pictures that I took, uh, took uh, on my trip last May to um, the... Uh, the uh, Evanston sub and you can see me walking in my slippers <laughs> uh, but anyway uh, these turned out really nice I'm really looking forward to putting them up um, they're just one slight problem I'm not going to use these by the uh, by the back by the actual tunnels because the the uh, back ground mountains come only about four inches so it's like right that high that's gonna be too low i kind of want instead i think something at probably six or seven inches so that's not going to be quite um it's not going to work it, it would look too far away for that area so um, anyway, here's the pictures. Uh, they're 9,500 by 2,400 in pixels in size. Uh, you can find these at my Geneva Sub website. There's a link in the description if you want to. You're welcome to download them. I print them out at Walgreens. It's like uh, printed out both of those two by eight foot banners at um, Walgreens for 40 bucks total. So that's about 10 bucks for eight foot. Uh, backdrop pretty cheap all right we'll go ahead and see some trains running through this is as far as I got I'm looking forward this week into uh, getting this painted and scenery being put down here and then getting the backdrop in there I'm going to redo the backdrops and I'm going to uh, make them probably around seven to eight inches so these will be a little bit larger then the photos that I have on hand it won't take long to do that and get them printed again. And then as I get further, I'll still be able to use the existing ones because once I get further away from these tunnels, I can then kind of transition into the smaller ones and then use those um, on the rest of the way on the upper level. So it looks pretty cool. I think everything is checking out. It's kind of the way I envision things to be. And think it's going to be a cool addition uh, this is a definitely a case where um, the bench work is flat and the mountain just basically rises from the flat bench work which usually you don't want to do but on the upper level you don't really have a whole lot of choice if you uh, check out scenery on my peninsula and the Wasatch grade and so forth you definitely have a lot of the scenery going below track level on this particular tunnel here, all the scenery goes above track level, which is kind of what you're limited to with it being the upper level. But I think it still looks pretty good. Everything's checking out. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Have a great week. Take care.